about five weeks that this, uh, since I dropped this off at the machine shop. I'm really excited to have it back today. Um, they were just really backed up and had a lot to do, but uh, Wes over there at Internal Combustion Machine was really cool. Had some good insight and some good tips for putting this back together. And um, what, from what he said was that the engine uh, looked overall in good shape, especially for what happened to it. I think overall we're looking good and we should be able to put this back together. So. Let's see if I remember how to do this. I'm excited to open this up and take a look. All right, there she is. Um, looks like they cleaned up the whole block, sprayed it down, they honed those cylinders, so they're looking real pretty now. I'm liking the way it turned out. Let's see, I know there was one over here. Yeah, you can see there's just still a little bit of scoring in there, but uh, Man, that looks a hell of a lot better. A little bit there, a tiny bit. Yeah. I don't know, they were all beat up pretty bad. Overall, that looks pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, that's, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I think that's gonna work out nicely. Cool, so I'll get it on this engine stand and flip it over and get back to work. Okay, I got it flipped over, so now we can take a better look from the underside. Um, they did a real light machine on the bottom. There isn't much they could take off because uh, it's such a minimal clearance engine, and that's what makes it such a hard engine to rebuild, is that the tolerances are very, very, very tiny on these engines. So. Um, a lot of times you can't even rebuild them and you have to buy a new engine or a used engine and so the prices for these engines used goes way up and unfortunately they usually suffer the same kind of fate. You know sometimes I guess if you were to buy a used engine it might be ideal to take it apart uh, before it got to that point where you would have to. But um, this fortunately worked out nicely. It's all still good. You can see See some of those scoring marks I can see a couple there so um, you know there's a possibility there's gonna be some uh, blow by coming in there and it might smoke but it's gonna be a running engine and it's actually gonna run really well if uh, we put it back together correctly so <laughs> hopefully that happens a big issue I was facing um, was um, the bearings for the crankshaft here these main journal bearings because according to forums and such, and the owner's manual, it's a select fit, but based on the numbers on the crankshaft, they are standard bearings. And according to the machine shop, they all came in at about the same spec. So, um, and also another fascinating thing was, here are my original bearings. And I saved these because I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to find select fit. Uh, apparently it's very hard to find select fit bearings for this particular motor. You have to go through the dealership and usually they have to even order it. So these are my original bearings and I kept them. They do have, um, and he numbered them for me and put them in sequence fortunately, which is always a good idea because if you don't then you're probably going to blow up your engine when you put it back together. These have numbers on them and they're all A. They all start with A for their coating. And on here, it's all B's, which means it should have B type bearings in it, but I don't think this motor's ever been rebuilt. So right here is where you'd find your stamp. Mine was SBBBBB. And according to this, the B would be nominal and it would be 2.4. 999 to 2.5002 2 inches, um, whereas the A will be 2.4996 to 2.4999, which means uh, this is a smaller size bearing and this is a slightly larger one. And since he actually uh, polished the crankshaft a little, he took off almost nothing, just polished it so it would be clean 
And uh, since we used the A-type bearings before, I'm gonna see if we can go ahead and put A-type in there before because we're probably gonna have more clearance than less and you really don't want that, uh, that much play in this. Again, we're going to put some plastic gauge on that and we're going to check what our actual clearance is. And the way I'm gonna do that, um, I'll have to show it to you as we do it, but basically I'm gonna take the bed plate, which is in this box, uh, they wrapped everything up nicely for me. Oh, they also, if I can cut that open, I've got so many car parts sitting around because I have two motors that I'm working on, which you should probably just take on one project at a time. Uh, this one I've been working on for a while. It's a Cleveland 351, a uh, very different motor. But uh, yeah, so I've got parts galore on all my shelves. So, but they are labeled, organized, separated. He also put the wrist pins on these pistons for me, which was awesome because they were press-in pins. And so you basically need a specific machining process and he had to heat these so that they'd fit. So um, really stoked he did that for me. That would be something I probably wouldn't have been able to do on my own. So cool good stuff um yeah so that will make the whole reassembly process much easier what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the bed plate on here without the crankshaft and i'm going to torque these down based on here i've got my torque specifications so again uh go find this manual the original service manual because it has a lot of good information and it's going to help you in the long run when you're putting your motor back together. This has my my torque sequence and also my specifications. Uh, according to the machine shop, he said he believes these are torque to yield bolts, which means you can only torque it so many times before you have to replace those bolts. Ideally, you're supposed to replace it when you rebuild it. I'm not gonna do that because I'm going to sell this truck and I don't want to spend, it would probably for that whole bolt, the specific bolt kit would probably cost a hundred plus dollars. So um, there's two ways you can do this. You could put the bed plate on without your crankshaft and you could measure it with a micrometer and then measure your crankshaft with a mic micrometer on each of these uh, locations. But if you don't have a micrometer, you could also use plastic gauge where you put the crankshaft back in here with the bearings and you have a little piece of plastic gauge that you put on each and every single one and then you torque it down and then pull it back up and then you check your specs and it works very well. Okay, so what I've done is um, gotten this plastic gauge here and you can get this at your local um, auto parts store. I got it at O'Reilly's. It was $2.50 for um, this section of plastic gauge. And the one I got was green because um, it has the smallest amount of uh, numbering on there as, and clearance because I know this is a very minimal clearance engine. So I went with the smaller one. I got the next step up just in case I wound up needing that, but I did not. Um, and what you do is you can see this tiny little thin piece coming out here. And it's just a little round piece of plastic, thus called plastic gauge. And they just cut off a piece. And um, I've got this, I've got the bed plate on right now. But you take off the bed plate and you're going to set it at where your journal bearings are. So I set one on top of every single location. So there was one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. And I ran them this way. Um, so I could get the whole width of each bearing and then I set the bed plate straight down try and make sure I actually put a little bit of grease in there um, beforehand just to make sure there wasn't any friction and then also it just helped the plastic gauge stick uh, right to that spot so it doesn't fall off when I set the bed plate down and then I put all the bolts in and torque it to specification these are according to the machine shop I didn't see it in the manual or online uh, besides the the uh, connecting rod bolts uh, those are actually torque to yield but uh, these ones he said they might be torque to yield and the best thing to do when torquing this down so that I can check my spec with the plastic gauge 
is to um, their torque to 25 foot pounds and then a 90 degree and instead of going the whole 90 degree we just go to 70 so that we're not getting to that point where we're actually going to put uh, stress on the bolt so make sure you put the right bolts in the right places um, this also does a good job of that and you know only so many bolts will fit anywhere but where these stars are are the ones that have a, a dowel coming out so what I actually did was I took the new oil pan to find out which bolts would go in the correct places and I float it over it like this so I say okay that one that's the two taller dowels that's the shorter dowel so I know that's where those bolts go I did have all the bolts in the correct places when I brought it to the machine shop but when I brought it, he brought it back they were all in a bag which was okay because he had the bed plate separate ideally they would have been back in the same holes but at this point there's no way to make sure that those are the exact bolts but that's okay so going back to checking your clearance between your crankshaft and your bed plate or your crankshaft and your journal bearings uh, you set that piece of plastic gauge on each one and then we put this on uh, torque it all to spec maybe a little under is what I did um, and then once all the bolts are there and torque to spec you go ahead and you take them all back out you pull your bed plate up and then you look at that I'm actually gonna pull the bed plate up so let me set this down for a minute okay so this is what it looks like without the bed plate so what I did was took a little piece of the plastic gauge set it right here and I set one right there and I set one right here one right here and right there and um, I did put the same bearings back these are the original bearings that I took out and what I'm trying to do is um, because it's so specific with the kinds of bearings you need to get and it can vary quite a bit um, I'm gonna try and reuse the same bearings and and what I did was I, I put the same bearings back in they're all numbered so they're all in the correct positions very important to number those bearings because if you take this bearing you set it over here and switch them there's a good chance you're gonna have some problems when you put it back together so same bearings in the same locations they do have a little notch there that helps you guide into the right place um, so the engines flipped over so these are the top halves of the bearings and then on the bed plate are the bottom halves so you can see the bearings in here there is some scoring but they you know I still wanted to see where they were at and he said he didn't see anything that that indicated that they couldn't be reused so um, that's good news that would save me a lot of money as I'm trying to do this as uh, cost efficiently as possible so once I torque that down you'll see the um, plastic gauge squished in there and you'll also see it on here it'll be squished down so you take clearance on one side is inch the other side is millimeter I'm going with inch and you can see the different thicknesses and I wrote it down for each one and it came out to uh, I think the most was 0 0.002 which I wrote it down for each journal bearing and they are all really close in spec this one's a little um, a little tighter which is not bad and according to factory specifications the bear bearing clearance can be from 0 0.0008 to 0 0.0021 and so actually they're all within specifications so that tells me that I can reuse these bearings so I'm going to and uh, that's great great news so now what I'm going to do is put on my uh, gasket maker what I chose spent a long time there was way too many options was this um, mega black OEM high temp silicone gasket sensor safe which this engine does have a lot of sensors on low odor non corrosive resists oil water and antifreeze mixtures it's very important to have your bed plate as clean as possible oh also I didn't I didn't mention that when you take off uh, your plastic gauge it will it might look like it's sticking to it I took a little bit of brake cleaner and put it on this shop rag uh, paper towel because I know this isn't gonna score the the crankshaft and a little bit of brake cleaner and I just sprayed it right onto the rag itself and then wiped it off and the plastic gauge came right off so if you're having a hard time getting your plastic gauge off that's a great way to do that without causing any damage I'm gonna go ahead 
and get this prepped and ready to put my bed plate back on. That's my next move. And, I, and this, the thing is, once I put down that gasket maker, you only have a very limited amount of time to get that bed plate on there and on there uh, evenly and correctly and torqued. Otherwise, you're probably gonna wind up with some leaks. So this is a very important seal that we have to do. So uh, take your time getting it prepped because once you get that, that, uh, that uh, gasket maker on there, it's gonna be a quick process. So uh, stay tuned. Mm -hmm.